Hello everyone and welcome to the Safety Artisan where you will find professional, pragmatic and impartial instruction on all things system safety. Uh, I'm Simon, I'm your host for today as always and it's the 4th of April 2020. So uh, with everything that's going on in the world I hope that this video finds you safe and well. Okay, so let's move straight on to what we're going to be doing. Now, I'm just going to, here we are. So, we're going to be talking today about subsystem hazard analysis. And this is task 204 under the military standard 882 ECHO. Now, we've done, previously we've done uh, 201, which was preliminary hazard identification, 202, which is preliminary hazard analysis, and 203, which is uh, safety requirements hazard analysis. And with task 204 and also task 205, which is system hazard analysis, we're now moving into getting to, uh, stuck into um, particular systems that we're thinking about. Uh, whether they be physical systems or intangible. So we're thinking about the, the system under consideration and, uh, and really getting into that analysis. Okay, so, so the topics that we're gonna cover today, um, I've got a little preamble to set things uh, in uh, perspective. We um, then get into the three purposes of task 204. Um, first of all, to verify compliance. Secondly, to identify new hazards. And thirdly, to recommend necessary actions. Or in actual fact, that would be, you know, recommend control measures for hazards and risks. We've got six slides of task description, uh, a couple of slides on reporting, one on contracting, and then a few slides on some uh, commentary where I put in my uh, tuppence worth uh, and add, I'll hopefully add some value to uh, the, the basic bones of the standard. And it's worth saying that you'll, you'll notice that subsystem is highlighted in yellow. And the reason for that is that um, the subsystem and system has analysis tasks are very, very similar. In fact, they're identical except for certain passages. And I've highlighted those in yellow. Now, normally I use a yellow highlight to, to emphasize something I want to talk about. This time round, I'm, I'm using underlining for that, and the yellow is showing you what is different for subsystem hazard analysis as opposed to system. And when you've watched the uh, both sessions uh, on 204 and 205, I think you'll, you'll see why and the significance of why I've done that. Anyway, moving on. Before we get started, we need to explain the system model that the 882 is assuming. So if we look on the left-hand side of the hexagons, we've got our system in the center, which we're considering. Maybe that interfaces with other systems. Uh, they work within some kind of operating environment. And hence we have the icon of, of the world and also the system and maybe other systems are there for a purpose they're performing some task they're doing some function and that's indicated by the tools so we're using the system to do something whatever it might be then as we move to the right hand side the system is itself broken down into subsystems and i've just you know we've got a couple here we've got subsystem a and b and then a is further broken down into a1 and a2 for example OK, so there's some sort of hierarchy of subsystems that is coming together and being integrated to form the overall system. OK, that is the that's the overall picture that I'd like to bear in mind while we're talking about this. And the assumption in the 882 is we're going to be looking at this subsystem hierarchy bottom upwards. OK. Um, largely, anyway, we'll come on to that. So let's move on. So 
purpose of the task. As I've said before, it's threefold. We must verify subsystem compliance with requirements. Well, that is to say requirements to deal with risk and hazards. We must identify previously unidentified hazards, which you know may emerge as we're working at a lower level now. And we must recommend actions necessary. So that's further requirements to eliminate or hazards or mitigate associated risks. So let's we'll keep those three things in mind and that will keep coming up. OK, so the first of six slides on task description. So basically, we are being told to perform and document the SSHA, subsystem hazard analysis. And it's got to include everything, whether it be new development, COTS, GOTS, GFE, NDI software, uh, and humans, as we'll see later. So everything has to be included. And we're being guided to consider the performance of the subsystem. So, you know, what, it, what it's doing when it's doing it properly. We've got to consider performance degradation, functional failures, timing errors, design errors or defects, and inadvertent function. Okay, we'll come back to that later. And while we're doing the analysis, we must consider the human as a component within the subsystem, um, dealing with inputs and making outputs, if, of course, there is an associated human. So we, we've got to include everything and we've got to think about what could go wrong with, with the system. So as we go on, the minimum that the analysis has got to cover is as follows. 